Hello, good afternoon everyone and especially a very warm welcome to all of you there in Lithuania or let's say Lavas. I just try to just to learn some Lithuanian words and that's not for one reason because we do have many Lithuanian students at Saxon University of Applied Sciences. Um, today you're here to learn a bit more about the university. Um, today I will give a presentation together with one of our Lithuanian students, Ieva. Uh, she's a second year student of finance and accounting and she will tell you also something about her own experience here in Holland. So I will start with telling something about the university. Then I will share some details about what is the University of Applied Sciences. And I also explain some practical matters like what is a tuition fee and how much money do you actually need if you live and study in Holland. Um, then the floor is to Ieva, Jekstaite, and then I will shortly tell something about how you can apply to Saxion. Well, first of all, um, as you know, uh, we are based in the Netherlands. Um, you may, well, I don't know who of you have ever been to Holland, but we are rather a small country. Um, and even that, we are also a very densely populated country. I just looked at the statistics in Lithuania, but also in the Netherlands. For example, in Lithuania, there are about 50 people who live in one square meter. Um, if you go to Holland, it's 450 people in one square meter. So this is also something that um, our students tell me that, okay, whenever I'm in Holland, um, there are people everywhere, I would say. Um, you can easily take the train, for example, to Amsterdam. In, it takes you there in one and a half hour. And um, if you look at the map that you will see in this presentation, you see that we are located in three different campuses. Um, you will find us in the cities Apeldoorn, Deventer and Enschede. Once you apply to one of the programs, it means that you will study in one of these cities, so you don't have to travel. All of them are more or less regional cities. It's regional because um, you live there with hundreds up to 150,000 people. The nice thing is it's a safe environment and you easily find your way in the city. Well, I will start with some pictures. Over here, you will see the campus in Deventer. Um, all of our campuses are located very close to the city center and the railway station. Um, here you will see the new wing that we opened last year. Over here is the campus in Apeldoorn. This is the campus where we teach the hotel management program. And over here is the campus in Enschede. This is uh, the largest campus and about 13,000 well, 13, students study here. Um, this is the main building and over here you will see, well, I call it always the glass building. And here you will find more of our creative studies like art and technology and gaming. Um, here are some random pictures to give you an impression how the university looks like and what kind of facilities we do have. Um, this is maybe a good example of facilities that we offer to students um, to sit down, to have a chat with your classmates, but also places where you can sit down to work on your assignments. Because once you are a student of Saxion, you do not have only lectures, but you also have group assignments, essays that you have to prepare, or any projects. So um, by having these facilities, we try to uh, accommodate you. Well, over here is the library. Um, just some random pictures of the building in Enschede. Um, as mentioned, we do have the program Art and Technology and Gaming. And students of these programs, they need to use a lot of other different facilities like these studios. Well, then something about our university. Um, well, in the Netherlands, we mainly have public universities. And Saxon University is established in 1875. And nowadays we have about 24,000 students. Um, if you come to us, it means that you will study in an international environment. Because some people think that they will study together with Dutch students. Uh, this is not true. You will be part of an international classroom and we try to have a very diverse mix of nationalities. Uh, in total, we have 3,500 international students with more than 70 different nationalities. 
and also something about the, the programs that we teach. We teach them all fully in English, so that means your lectures are in English, your exams, um, everyone speaks English also in the Netherlands. So in a way, you, it's not really necessary to learn the Dutch language. And then something about what is a University of Applied Sciences. Um, it's very important to understand that in the Netherlands we have two types of universities. There are research universities and universities of applied sciences. Um, research universities, they focus on an academic career. Um, they focus more on scientific research, so it's very much theory based. If you go to a university of applied sciences like Saxion, uh, we do not focus only on the theory, but also on your skills and your competences. So in a way, we try to well, prepare you for the job market later on. So what happens if you apply for a program of four years, which is the average duration of a bachelor program, you have at least one year of gaining some work experience, for example, through an internship or your final thesis. Um, to give you an example, um, over here you will see an overview of the companies where students do our internship. Um, doing an internship uh, within our university doesn't mean that um, you will um, well, bring coffee to your colleagues or that you have, an, have to make photocopies. It really means that um, you are part of an international team or a part of a department and there is a supervisor from the company who will help you out and who will assist you. So it's really on a higher skilled level. So once you are graduated, you can really prove that you have some work experience. And that makes you a ve very valuable employee for future companies. Well, over here you see some examples of companies with whom we cooperate and uh, where you can do your internship or final thesis. Um, me, myself, I graduated uh, a couple of years ago. I also was a student of Saxion. I was a student of international business. And for example, I did my internship in Cape Town, South Africa, and I went to Bucharest, Romania. Uh, so it's really, uh, well, it really depends on you, but it's really possible to uh, have a stay abroad during your study at Saxion. Um, maybe you already looked at the website of our university to have an overview of the programs that we offer. Um, later on, because I will not discuss all the programs during this webinar, um, but it's really possible if you have questions or if you want to have more information about a certain program, feel free to contact me. In the last slide of this presentation, you will find my email address, so uh, please do not hesitate to ask your questions. Well, something about student life, um, and later on, Eva can tell you a lot more about it, uh, but we think it's very important to make sure that you have a good time here in Holland, because we think that's part of your success here at the university also. So what we do, first of all, is uh, we offer the possibility to have a buddy. And a buddy is an international student of Saxion who studies here already for a couple of years. And that buddy will help you out with all kind of practical questions like where to buy your bike because in the Holland you definitely need a bike to get from your place to the university or to find the best supermarkets or to find good accommodation or to find a nice parties in the city so a buddy is really your first friend here at the university and um, it might be very helpful also so we can connect you in your case to buddies from Lithuania, so students who study here already for a time. Then we also have host families, Dutch families are these who um, try to learn more of the culture of our international students and they will also invite you for typical Dutch uh, gatherings or they bring you to nice places in Holland. And also we offer excursions, like last weekend we went to the Keukenhof, maybe you know that, it's a nice place, it's a huge park in the Netherlands where you will find a lot of tulips or during Christmas we go to Germany to visit a Christmas market. So we try to give you the possibility to see a lot of nice places in Holland. And if you look at the website of our uh, university, you will also find more information about the sport facilities that we have. Well, something about the tuition fee, because you may want to know, okay, what do I actually have to pay? 
Well, the fee for all the students from EU is 1,906 euros. Uh, this is a fixed fee and it doesn't differ for each program. And you have the possibility to pay in installments. That means that you pay the fee in 10 different periods of time. The first installment is at the end of September and then on a monthly basis you will pay Saxion your tuition fee. And then something that might be a difficult um, slide to explain it very well to you, um, but I will give it a try because the Dutch government, they offer possibilities for, well, only for EU students to apply for a loan or to apply for a grant. I will start with the first one, which is called tuition fee loan. Uh, the tuition fee loan covers in total, as the name says it already, your tuition fee. So each month you get 152 euros from the government. In return, um, you need to finish your studies, of course. But another important thing is that a loan means that you have to pay it back to the Dutch government. You will start to pay it back three years after finishing your studies. And you can spread it over 15 years. For example, I finished my studies in 2006 and right now I'm still paying the loan that I took once I was a student. And this is what most of our European students do. Um, they apply for a tuition fee loan and they start to pay it back after finishing their studies. Then there is something more. Um, you can apply for a grant. A grant is money that you get from the Dutch government and you don't have to pay it back after finishing your studies. So in a way it's a gift, but it's not really a gift as we do have some very strict requirements for that. Uh, first of all, you need to have a part-time job in the Netherlands um, and you even need to work a number of hours on a weekly or on a monthly basis. It means 14 hours a week or let's say 56 hours a month. Um, first of all, and this is really my advice to you, it can be very difficult to find a job because most students who come here, they really think that, okay, you know, I will start my studies in September, I will come somewhere well, let's say half August, um, then I do have the time to find my job, to look for my room, etc. Well, well, I really have to say finding a job can be difficult. And maybe especially because of the first year, uh, my advice will be look for a job later on because you're here for a certain reason and your main reason and your main goal is to be a successful student. Um, so I think a job should not uh, be most important. So try to have your finances there to at least cover the first year in Holland. But the grant means that, well, if you do have a part-time job, and I think Eva can tell you a bit more because she works here in the Netherlands. She has a part-time job and I think she even has the grant. Grant means money you don't have to pay back. You do get a basic grant of 272 euros. And depending on the income of your parents, you can get the additional grant. So in total, you can get a grant of 524 euros a month. And if that's not enough, you can still apply for an additional loan. And besides that, you also get a card with, well, that you can use to uh, travel with public transport, which is bus, metro, train, whatsoever. Okay, and then something about the cost for living, which is also um, a question that I get a lot from uh, students within the EU. Well, on average, most of your money, you will use that for your accommodation. You will live in a student room and you will share your kitchen, bathroom and living room with two or three other students. On average, I think the rent is between 300 up to 350 euros. Um, with that amount, you definitely are able to find a decent place to stay. And then I just asked randomly some students like, okay, how much money do you actually spend if you live in Enschede or Deventer and Apeldoorn? Um, honestly, I have to say we are based in the eastern side of the Netherlands um, where the rent prices of student room are not that high if you compare it to the West like Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Utrecht. But at least I hope this slides give you a bit more information about cost for living in Holland. Okay, I will now give the floor to Ieva and she will tell you a bit about her life here in the Netherlands. Yes. <laughs> okay. 
Labai diena visiems, aš esu Jeva Jakštaitė, aš esu iš Vilniaus ir šiuo metu studijuoju Enšėdės mieste, Saksijo universitete. Ir aš bandysiu pristatyti ir papasakoti apie savo gyvenimą čia lietuvių kalba. Nors tai gal ir ganėtinai sudėtinga, nes pagrindžia čia išneku angliškai ir mano visos studijos yra anglų kalba. Ir taip pat egzaminai, taip pat žiūrimi filmai ar skaitamas knygos. Taip kad šneku lietuviškai, tik tai su kitais lietuviais ir kartais. Tai pirmiausia gal būtų įdomu, kodėl aš pasirinkau studijuoti užsienyje. Tai mano pirmas pasirinkimas buvo studijuoti užsienyje dėl to, kad aš norėjau patirti labiau international aplinką, daugiau pažinti įvairių žmonių iš kitų pasaulio kraštų ir tai tikrai man pavyko įgyventinti, nes dabar tikrai galiu nuo šeždžiai pasakyti, kad pažįstu žmonių taip pat iš Brazilijos, iš Omano ir iš Kinijos ir iš visų kitų pasaulio šalių, kas yra labai įdomu bendraujant ir susipažįstant su naujomis kultūromis ir tiesiog pažįstant įvairius kitokius žmonius ir taip pat greunant gal savo stereotipus, kuriuos mes esame susikūrę, nes Reikia pirmiausia pažinti žmonės ir sužinoti, kokie ir iš tai rukrųjų, kad galėtum kažką pasakyti. O aš pasirinkau Saksijonų universitetą per programą stojimo kalba LT. Jie man padėjo stoti į du universitetus, Olandijoje. Ir aš pasirinkau šį universitetą Saksijonų dėl to, kad man labiau patiko ir buvo priimtina studijų programa. Taip pat, kad tai yra... University of Applied Science, kas suteikia daugiau praktinių žinių ir praktinio darbo, tai kaip jau buvo pristatyta, pas mus ypač pasirinkus praktinės studijų programas kaip Art and Technology ar Computer Science ir Gaming, tai yra labai labai daug praktinio darbo, yra puikios laboratorijos tam suteiktos ir yra puikios galimybės Ne tik tais viską mokytis teorinėm ir lygminėm, bet taip pat iš karto įgyti įgūdžius. Įgyti įgūdžius, ne. Tai kaip yra, kaip jau matysiu, nuotraukose mūsų studijų facilities yra iš ties modernas ir ganėtinai naujoviškas ir kas metas yra atnaujonamas dalys universiteto ir tarkim yra departamentų, kurie yra iš ties labai gražiai įrengti ir yra suteiktas puikias sąlygos tiesiog pasilikti ten po paskaitų ir mokytis grupėse ar sustikti grupėse, nes tikrai yra daug studentų, kurie nėra tik tai gyvenantis enšėdės mieste, bet taip pat yra kas gyvena Vokietijoje ir važinėja kiekvieną dieną. Ir yra puikios galimybės tiesiog būti universitete ir yra daug atvirų erdvių, kur galima susiesti draugę ir tiesiog mokytis. O kalbant apie klasės, tai labai daug klasių nėra per savaitę, tai nėra, kad labai sudėtingas tvarkarašis ir nereikia sudėti paskaitose nuo aštuonių ryto iki septynių vakaro, tai užtrunkau jau maždaug pusę dienos, dažniausiai paskaitės užtrunkau po pasantros valandos ir tai nėra perpildus tos klasės, tai yra maždaug 20 žmonių vienoje klasėje ir ypač perinant į antrus metus, tai visus tero vis mažiau žmonių. Taip kad dėstai gali tikrai skirti individualaus laiko ir padėti atsakyti jums rūpimus klausimus ar iškilusias problemas. Ir dėstai čia ypač international kursuose, jie yra labai pagalbų paslaugus ir tikrai linkia padėti, tai jais galima vis laik susitiekti elektroniniu paštu, net ir po paskaitų metu ir jie vis laik stengsi sakyti, kuo greičiau, kuo galėdami. Ir jeigu kyla tiesiog klausimu apie dėstomą dalyką ar apie buvusią klasę, tai jie vis laik nori jie atsako ir vis laik pat dar, jeigu norisi daugiau apie tai sužinoti ir papildomu uždačiu, tai jie vis laik norimai tai padeda. Bet apie tai gal sužinosite daugiau, jeigu atvyksite čia studijuoti. Kas daugiau, tai Mano kasdieninis gyvenimas tai labai priklauso nuo oro, nes čia labai labai daug klyja, supirkauskėti. Ir miestas nėra didelis, tai pagrindė vaikštumo yra universitetą, grįžtama namo, pavalgomo, pasiruošimo pamokos, išeinama į darbą, savaitgaliais 
mes visi einami miesą, nes ketvirtadienį jis, pavyzdžiui, čia, tai yra studentų na, vakaras, naktis, kai daugumą studentų eina į miestą, nes ant šitie miestas yra labai populiarus studentų miestas, nes taip pat kitame gale yra kitas universitetas, tai tikrai yra labai daug studentų ir labai daug jaunų žmonių ir tikrai daugelis jų išneka angliškai, taip kad olandų kalba nėra privaloma, bet žinoma yra didelis pilsas, jeigu ją mokyta ar ketina tai išmokti, bet taip pat laisvai galima visur susikalbėti angliškai. Kadangi miestas nėra didelis, tai labai daug apsipriknėti nėra ir eiti kur, bet šeštaniais mes turime didelį turkų, kaip kalvarijos ar kažkas tokio, kur yra parduodami tiesiog visokie naminiai, gaminiai ir visa kita. Bet jeigu suvodo ant šitį miestas, tai visą laiką galima sėsti į traukinį pusvalandžių valandų ir porai valandų ir tiesiog nuvažiuoti, kur nors kitur pasivaikšti, pasižiūrėti. Mes dažnai važiuojame pravišį į Den Hagą prie jūros tiesiog pasižiūrėti ir pagaliau atidaryti pavasario sezoną, nes pagaliau saulėta ir galima įbristi į vadinį. Bet net ir mūsų mieste yra ką veikti, kur naiti, nes mes tas turi labai daug įvairių parkų ir jie tikrai yra gražus. Taip, kad kai atvažiuojasi, tikrai verta pasivaikšti, tiesiog po miesto ir tai nėra sudėtinga, kadangi miestas nėra didelis, tai galima naiti visur pie šiamis. Nors pagrindinė transporto priemonė yra dviračiai, ir dviračiai yra visur ir daug labiau yra išvysti tą dviračių sistemą. Tai visur yra raudonas tai kelis prie pagrindinio kelio, kur važiuoja visi dviračiai ir tikrai pamatysite, pažinsite, kur yra studentų namas ar kur yra statis, nes ten dviračių yra daugiau nei vėlia kur kitur. Ir kalbant toliau apie pinigus, tai pavyzdžiui, aš gyvenu studentų bendrabutėje, kur pagrinta visi žmonės yra international ir aš moku 225 eurus per mėnesį plus internetas, o maisto išlaidams tai yra apie 100-150 eurų per mėnesį, nu priklausimu kiek daug valgote ar kiek daug labai norite eiti linksmintis, nes jeigu ketina ateiti į miestą, tai didelis patarimas yra pirmiausia pradėti namuose, o paskai eiti į miestą, nes kitaip tai bus labai brangu. Bet jeigu turite darbą ir galinite finansavimą, tai išlaidos yra labai suprantamas ir labai normalios. Ir darbą susirasti nėra per nelyg sudėtinga, jeigu yra jo ieškote. Bet aš, pavyzdžiui, pirmaisiais metais, kad čia studijavau, jo neieško, aš pradėjau dirbti tik tai vasarą prieš antrius metus. Ir kadangi antrais metais pas man yra mažiau klasų, tai aš galiu savo leisti dirbti, pavyzdžiui, du kartus per savaitį ir aš surenku pakankamą kiek į valandų ir tikrai mokana normaliai ir viskas yra pakankamai gerai. Ir tarp kitko, kaip šiaip man gyvenimas Olandijoje ir kokie kultūriniai pokyčiai mane čia ištiko, kai tik atvažiavau, tai pirmiausia buvo didelis šokas, nes pirmą dieną, kai aš atvažiavau, aš neturėjau kur gyventi, tai aš tiesiog gyvenau su kažkokiais studentais, kažkokiai mename su dideliu lagaminu. Tai mane labai nustebino, kad žmonės yra labai draugiški tiesą pasakęs gatvėse, nes irgi eini gatvė ir kažkas tiesiog tau pasako labas, tu taip žiūri ir ar aš tave pažįstu ar ne. Bet šiaip tai yra labai labai atviri žmonės, labai nesisikausta kaip pas mus Lietuvoje ir jie tiesiog labai pasakysiu, atsipalaidavę. Nes jie savo leidžia daryti kaip jie nori, pavyzdžiui, per šventes čia įvairias, nes tikrai būna mūsų mėsai ir švendžių, kaip karaliaus naktis, karalienės diena ar karnavalas ar tiesiog kažkai koncertai mieste, tai tikrai pamatysite žmonių visokių visaip apsirengusių ir tarančių viską, kas tik kyla į galvą. Tai tikrai galiu pasakyti, kad pirmas poras savo ačių, planetgi mėnesį bus tai labai keista. Nes kai atvažiuosite čia, jeigu atvažiuosite Tai pirmą savaitę prieš studijas yra tiesiog atidaroma savaitę universitetui. Tai miestas bus pripildytas studentų, bus didelis koncertas ir visą kitą. Ir tikrai pamatysite to, kad dar nematyti Lietuvoje ir tai bus labai keista, bet prie to yra labai greitai priprantama, labai greitai įsilėjama į tą naują patirtį, naują aplinką. Ir tai suteikia labai daug laisvės pojūčio. Ir taip pat tai suteikia tą 
su augusiu jau pojūsi, nes taiga lėkate vienas iš savęs, kaip pavyzdžiui, aš, aš važiuoju, aš nieko nepažinau, nieko nežinau, nežinau, kur eiti, ką daryti, bet jis sako, kad važiuojate čia. Ir tada suprantate, kad nebėra mamos, kurį padaryti laikyti, ar išskalbs kalbinius, ar pasirūpins nuomą. Tai, tai yra didelis šokas, žinau, bet jeigu esu tam pasiruošę, tai tikrai po kurio laiko persiluštai tai ir suprasti, kad esu pagaliau saugęs ir reikia gyventi savo iš savęs ir pačiam susidaryti savas taisyklės. Tai tikiuosi, kad papasakojau pakankamai apie savo universitetą ir savo gyvenimą. Jeigu yra klausimų, tai galite rašyti, tiesiog susisiekti su mumis. And that would be it. Thank you. Ok. Well, thank you, Ayeva. Um, well, I will just tell you in these last minutes of this webinar a bit more about how you can apply to one of the programs of Sakya University. Um, first of all, um, it's also good to know if you need some help with your application, because uh, you don't have to do it all on your own. Because first of all, we do have local representatives in Lithuania who can help you. Uh, one of our agents is Kastu and Kalba, who are based in, I think, not only even Vilnius, but also Kaunas, Klaipeda, and some other cities in Lithuania. Also, if you need some help or assistance from Saksion, let me know, because we can help you. Um, looking at the entry requirements, because you're maybe curious, okay, what kind of degree do I need in order to be uh, eligible to start at a bachelor program? Well, first of all, we will look at your high school degree. Um, I know, I'm, I think I cannot pronounce it correctly, but we look at your Brandes Atestetas. Um, then we also look at your grade for English. What we do is we will look at your final grade list from your high school. And if you pass your English, then you meet the requirements. Uh, so then you can also start. If you don't, then you need to do an answer TOEFL test. But from the previous years, I think 99% of all the EU students, they meet the requirement with their final list from their high school. Um, many students have doubts about the level of English. Um, the experience of students is that maybe in the first weeks it can be difficult. Um, but, well, my message to you is, well, the only way to learn a certain language is just by practicing and just by doing. So, um, but if you, you can always do, of course, an ALTS or TOEFL test just to see if you meet the standard. For example, for ALTS, we need to have a minimum score of 6.0. Um, if you go to our website on the link that you will see in the slide, then you will find the entry requirements um, for all the programs that we have and also with a bit more information on the requirements that we have. Um, then something how to apply. Well, first of all, you need to find out what is the program of my interest. Um, maybe you know it already, but from my personal experience, this is maybe the hardest part to find out what you would like to study. Um, that's why I always advise you uh, to speak with students who maybe made a decision already a couple of years ago to go abroad to study at, I don't know, even in the Netherlands or Denmark or wherever. But I think it's very useful to speak with students who made that decision and to see, okay, am I a person who would like to live abroad? Um, we can help you with contact persons, with Lithuanian students who study at our university. Yeva is one of them, uh, but we do have a lot of Lithuanian students. So feel free to contact me or Yeva afterwards. Then, if you know what you would like to study, you can apply for one of our programs online. First of all, you go to a website called studylink.nl and um, once you have finished this portal, uh, you will get a username and a password. And with that username and password, you have to go to our SIS portal. The SIS portal is our tool that we use where you can upload all your documents. Well, and then you're maybe curious, okay, what kind of documents do I need? I will tell you later. First of all, I will show you how, how the portal looks. Um, if you apply through the help of one of our local representatives, they will do this for you or they will assist you with this. Um, this is how the portal looks and you will go to um, in the menu to overview of applications 
and over there um, you will see that you have to finish seven different steps well first of all one of the things that you need to do is to upload all your documents the documents that we need are listed here like your passport uh, a photo and that means we need this picture to issue a student card once you start here then we of course need a scan copy of your ID card or your passport we will ask for a transcript or we call it a grade list so what is your final grade at high school then we need your high school diploma and both of them need to be officially translated into English because unfortunately <laughs> we don't speak Lithuanian language and then for most or some of the programs, we ask a motivation letter or a CV. Um, if some of you is interested to become a student of hotel management or art, of art and technology or game creation, there are some intake assessments. What we do is we will invite you for a Skype interview um, and then you will speak with the admission officer or the course director and uh, they want to know, okay, how motivated are you to start with that program? Also, if you look at the programs of art and technology and game creation, we also want to make sure that you are a creative student. That's why we first of all require that you send in a portfolio and you can do it online. Uh, that means a portfolio, you will um, upload pictures, drawings, sketches. Uh, maybe you ever made a game yourself or websites or whatsoever because um, this is very important for us because we really select students who at least have well a creative mind and well creativity is something that we cannot learn um, so if you have more questions about documents go to one of our local representatives or ask me uh, and then we can help you then the next slide well as mentioned there are four or sorry seven application steps uh, it's very important uh, to also finish the last step. Uh, that means that you have to submit your applications. At the moment that you submit your application, uh, my colleagues from the Student Registration Office, they can view your application and they can process it. So if you don't submit, we cannot do anything. So this is a very important step. Um, we know that it can sometimes be difficult to apply to one of our programs. So that's why we have a manual for you. Uh, you will see this link, uh, saxion.edu slash application manual. Well, over here, just to, um, to stop my presentation, um, you see some pictures of the Netherlands. Well, first of all, here you will see the, the orange color. This is how we are dressed up. And I think also even with the World Cup soccer that will start, uh, I think, next month. Um, so we all will be dressed in our orange clothes. Well, this is what you see on the streets. Everyone is using their bikes to get from one place to the other. Even elderly people, they just put a motor on and they can still cycle. Um, well, especially this is the picture in the spring season. Um, this is what you see in the western part of the Netherlands. You see uh, the flower tulips everywhere. And this is one of our main export products. And here you will see an impression of the city Deventer, where you will find our campus. And over here, you will see pictures of the city Enschede. Um, well, this is in, well the end of the presentation. Um, if you have questions, feel free to ask me or Ieva. Over here, you will find our email addresses. And for us, it's very important because it's the, one of the first times that we do this webinar. Feel free to give your feedback. Like, was it useful? What kind of information did you miss? because uh, then we can improve and maybe even in a couple of months we will give a new webinar uh, to inform you about our university. Well, for now, I wish you a lot of success at your high school, uh, maybe even with your final exams this month or coming month, and wish you a lot of success also with making your final choice for university. And, well, feel free to be in touch with us. Okay, thank you for now. Bye-bye.